Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO. It's the two-man power trip here with you here for our predictions for Impacto Rebellion. Uh, we're a little late coming with this one, so hopefully we're going to catch some people before the show's on. If you're coming in late or maybe after the show's happened, feel free to tell us how badly we did. Uh, as always. Uh, I hope not so bad. <laughs> yeah, I hope not that bad. As always, it's Matt, yeah. Ryan Alvarez. We're here. Um, and we got a pretty loaded yeah, card. Unless you, yeah, unless you got the last WrestleCast, which, um, you know, Matt's now been, or vice versa. So, nah. clear that up. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, we got, we got a pretty fun card here coming up for tonight. Uh, you just want to get right on into it? Absolutely. Let's, Let's hit it. All right, so we got Fire and Flava defending the Impact Knockouts tag titles against Jordan Grace and the debuting Rachel Elring. Fantastic spot for her, in my opinion. Um, very, very yeah. happy with this debut. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, this is perfect because it, there's, there's nowhere else she could have gone to make that type of impact, no pun intended. Um, I mean, she could have gone to AEW, been kind of lumped in with the rest of the you know, the, the the rising women's division. Um, is a perfect spot for her. Uh, this is going to be a perfect first title reign for her because you don't debut Rachel Ellering with Jordan Grace unless you um, unless you put the titles on them. Also, um, bold prediction for this. They will be accompanied to the ring by Paul Ellering. I would be all about that. And hopefully that's the case. I am all in on Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. I wonder if maybe we're going to give them some kind of tag team name. Oh, wow. Um, uh, Grace by Ellering. I don't know. It's Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, I think it's bad it's enough to be a fire like, flame in this match. Some, some kind of powerhouse name. Maybe maybe go with like the bombshells. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Uh good callback also to one of the last female tag teams in uh WWE's women tag titles. Hmm. I like it. Yeah, I got a bunch of useless knowledge here. <laughs> um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so it could be could be a, a call back to the British bombshells or the Ring Warriors. Um, all right, so we're both in agreement there. L Ring Grace. Yeah, yeah, L Ring uh, Grace for 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 sure. Um, I think I think this title reign for Fire and Flavor, while it was nice while it lasted. Uh, it's it's gone on for way too long and for useless titles, but you can catch all of my all of my eccentric ranting on the Impact Tag Team Women's Division in uh, every other video we talk about Impact. Just about, I will say, Fire and Flavor did has has done just about everything they could to elevate the titles upon having them debut. I think they were the right choice. Um, yeah. All right, next match up here, we have the eight-man tag team title, or not tag team title, geez, eight-man tag team match. Chris Saban, Eddie Edwards, James Storm, and Willie Mack versus Violent by Design, Eric Young, Diener, Joe Doring, and Rhino. Um, now, I'm pretty certain this pay-per-view is going to be live tonight. Oh, a whole thing just clicked in my head now. Okay. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> where I'm going here. So uh, right before we came on air um, – you know, it's kind of been leaked out that that it's very likely of the of a debuting wrestler for Impact Wrestling. Um, you might know him as Big Cass in WWE, uh, Cass XL on the on on the Indies. Um, Eric Young, obviously dealing with a with a with an injury with a very long recovery time, um, and. Personally, this couldn't come at a better time for Big Cass to be the newest member of Violent by Design, not taking Eric Young's spot, just filling the void 
um, in their four man stable, well, five, including him. Um, I, I don't see the logic in putting Eric Young in a live match, especially now since we've gone um, lengths out, outside of the ring to mention said injury. So um, yeah. I think if this is the move, then they win. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't see this going any other way, honestly. I feel like Violent by design, we keep them rolling. We keep all of the attention on them right now. Um, but either way, this is this is going to be fast paced. All eight men in this match can work. Um, I'll be very excited. I will say, I almost wish if it is Cass, he was already in and kind of had Joe Doring's spot. <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm nitpicking. I'm taking things here. Another option here, and maybe this is going to be jumping the gun and causing some issues right off the bat. Jake something. Maybe maybe yeah. after the beatdown, he finally turns to the dark side. Yeah. Um. When when we first saw him debut and he had his new look, his new name. Yeah. Um. We 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 both said the same thing. Star. A hundred percent, because even though I don't, I don't think Jake something has a match on this card. Not yet. I won't be surprised if maybe they add him versus Shira or him versus uh, Rohit to the pre-show. Yeah, um, which is which is really strange in itself because you know just weeks ago we had Shira and Rohit feuding, but off point there. Um, you know, we could use a couple of different guys here for EY spot. Um, if it's not big cast, who do you think it could possibly be other than Jake something? Let, let, let's say he stays on the path of, you know, good of goodness. Um, who's, who's another guy you think it could be? I got two names for you. One of them will be probably it's too close to his last show mm. uh, showing an impact or he was a face, but Petey Williams, he kind of fits that Eric young mold. Um, former, so, former, uh, former team Canada too. Former team Canada. So maybe you have him pull the whole when you, you know, when you can't go and when you're down and out, who do you turn to? You turn to your family. Mm. Um, and another name here tied closely to EY, uh, because they worked in a stable together called the world elite, um, of course, referring to Sheikh Abdul Basir or Sean Davari. He doesn't need to necessarily be a mainstay. Um, I definitely think if it's PD or if it's Davari, uh, they come in there is that. You know, this is probably a one-off. Yeah. Um, I definitely love the work that Davari's doing now in MLW, who just got their TV deal announced, which is fantastic for yeah. those who have access. Um, but, you know, and seeing him here would be a great spot for him. He's doing great work in Contra at the moment. Um, let me throw a name out here for you and, you know, kind of a slightly – Re- recent callback here and this is the only other name um who's been around as of late kind of kind of just here and there chris harris and it could stem from kind kind of where your mindset is coming as far as you know, jake something where he's where you know he got the beat down and now he's turning and this could also be a one off um just to fill the void um, to kind of see where it goes. Because as I talk, I have another theory as to where we could put big Cass um, and where he'll be on this show. And I'll get to that in a sec, but um, I think we're both in agreement. though. This is violent by design. Ooh. Yeah. You're thinking the same thing that I am. Actually, no, I'm just thinking of another possible replacement. Oh, go. Um, and this probably would be met with some 
mixed results. Mm. But, you know, who is someone who is capable of just beating down everyone who if, if you have Eric Young down and out and he's not going to challenge for the world title, you need to have someone who is a world champion caliber individual. Uh-oh. Moose isn't on the card. Yeah, my only my only hiccup with that being that we just heard him on Impact. Um, you know, his eyes are going to be on the world title match. You know, he's saying that. Be. Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely possible. I just think that um, he he's kind of outside of the mold for them. Do you have some for somebody else? Yeah, and I'm just going through the list here. But this is more of a question. Where is he yeah. at on his recovery? Oh, so Bound for Glory was in October? October. So he's six months at least. So uh, November, December, January, February, March. Six months would be April, which is where we're at now. Um uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if there was something going he on there. Went surgery in February. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, but that was for a hernia. I think I think that was for the same injury because it was the one that he put off, and we all asked why he put it off, and it was because he had multiple injuries, and he got he wanted to go to a specialist that could do everything at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think we could sit here and play devil's advocate for the entire show. Um, but I I don't know. I it, it's just the face team just seems just really just slapped together. It seems like that's all we're doing now on these on these pay per view shows, these impact specials, is we're taking you know you know one of the Random top heel stables. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, um, more than that. <laughs> yeah, I want more than that. So, I want the heels to win here. I need the heels to win so that we can establish the fact that teamwork can triumph over every every different possible face com- combination. You know that can be thrown at them. Uh, could this be Tommy Dreamer? I hate you. Next match: Trey Miguel versus Sammy Callahan. Last man standing. So I'm really glad we came to this match next because this match kind of came about because Sammy Callahan wanted to mentor Trey Miguel. And if Trey Miguel is not going to accept that offer, maybe there's somebody else, maybe a debuting Kaz XL that will be the mentor of Sammy Callahan. And that is how Sammy Callahan defeats Trey Miguel. I can see that. That could be good. I'd be okay with that. I do think Trey Miguel's probably winning this match, though. Yeah, a lot of signs point point to that just from the back and forth they've had over the last two months. I kind of feel like we're going to get Kenny Omega versus Trey Miguel. It'll be a really good match, but Trey Miguel can need a loss to Kenny Omega. A lot of people can, honestly. Well, let's, let's be honest. Yeah, Everyone can. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not spoiling who's who I'm picking for the main event at all. I think we've in our last three months in, impact specials, <laughs> last three months, you know, since honestly, since hard, since hard to kill, but we'll, yeah, we'll get to that. Since he just jumped in the car with Don Callis after AEW. Yeah. At the beginning of December. <sighs> all right. So I got Trey Miguel. Who you got? Um, I'm, I'm going to say if there's any type of interference, it's going to be Sammy Callahan, but if it's, if it's clean, it's one-on-one, it's going to be Trey Miguel. That's just what the story calls for. Um, I think though, if this is the cast spot, then it, then it, then it's gotta be Sammy. Yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, although... We haven't seen Ken Shamrock in a hot minute. Um, Maybe Kaz balances out Shamrock. Yeah. There's that. There's that. There's a lot of options here for Kaz. Um, 
Ace Austin defending the X Division title versus Josh Alexander and TJP. I am sticking with the current X Division champion, Ace Austin. He just won the belt. He should keep the mm-hmm. belt for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is outstanding. He is a he is a star. Um, e- even if he didn't have Madman Fulton in his in his corner, um, which arguably, um, you know, kind of outside of Eric Young, you could say that Fulton is the most successful. Um, see, the most successful sanity member to come out of that. Um, I, I know you're probably going to say Nikki Cross, uh, but she no, hasn't been was, on TV in a while. Alexander Wolf. Alexander Wolf. I mean, he's been an Imperium, but has it's he done point. anything? Of, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's close, but, you know, it's nice. It, it's, it's nice to see a guy like that get out of the system and kind of, you know, find a good spot for him. Um, and obviously it's a three-way match. There's no disqualification. So I wholeheartedly see Madman Fulton getting involved in some type of way. Um, but either way, Ace, Ace Austin's a star. Keep the title on him. There's no reason to take it off of him. And if TJP wins, I swear to God, uh, you, be- you better hope that match starts first. Cause I'll just, because I'll just tell you to probably just stay home. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. Uh, uh, Diana Perazzo versus Tennille Dashwood. Look, oh, being a being being accompanied by next gen talent, Caleb with a K, or Caleb Conley, both good. Caleb Conley, both great. Um. We have a saying here in PWL, and uh, that goes, you never bet against the queen. And, uh, you know, Diana Perrazzo is exactly that in Impact. Never bet against the queen. There's no reason to take the title off of her. There is. is, And this is, you know, you, you, you and I got into this a little bit the other night about the AEW women's division and kind of, you know, and I think I was the one that brought up recycling challengers, um, you know, got off the rails from there, but um, it's kind of the same with Deanna Perrazzo and impact. It's we're kind of to the end of our rope. So we kind of have to, at some point or another, circle the wagon here and, you know, get to another point where, where we're seeing, you know, Deanna, Deanna Perrazzo versus this person for the second time, the third time. And obviously I'm not saying Jordan Grace because she's going to be uh, one half of the Impact Knockouts Tag Team Champions. Um, but after after Deanna Perrazzo wins here, there is literally nobody else. I mean, there's Taylor Wilde. I could see being the next victim. Um Taylor Wilde might take the belt off her. Uh, I hate you. And see, here's here's the thing. I would have been content with Jazz because you could sell that as Jazz just being a legend. And, one last run. And one last run. But Taylor Wilde is, you know, she wasn't great when she was in Impact. She, or sorry, in TNA. Um she was fine. She was serviceable. You know, she was she was she was okay. But she's not on jazz level where, you know, if you're and it doesn't matter the build, okay? Deanna Perrazzo can outwork Taylor Wilde. Now, here's the other thing to think about. If it's not gonna be Taylor Wilde, the only person other than her, I can see taking it would probably be Sue Young. Don't no, it's not. It's not. Hey Ryan, let me tell you about my friend Gail Kim here. <laughs> no, Gail Kim is okay. 
I don't think that Gail Kim is returning. She is retired. They had a big retirement return ceremony for her. Diana Perrazzo breaks both of Taylor Wilde's arms. Is that going to happen, though? Or is Diana Perrazzo going to happen, win? though? Or is Diana Perrazzo just going to win like she normally does? And Taylor Wilde's return has been for nothing. Um, yeah, not for nothing. Just to put over Diana Perrazzo as the greatest knockout of all time. To um, beat the woman. Or to be the woman, you have to beat the woman. Listen, I, I call it yeah. call it what it is. Deanna Perrazzo is the best women's wrestler going right now. Mm. See, and here's why I say that because you can make arguments for others, but. Diana Perrazzo won the knockouts title during during the pandemic, has been holding the knockouts division afloat the entire time. She cuts outstanding promos. Her in-ring work is next to none. And we just got a returning Charlotte who's got to take a little bit of time off. She's got to have some dental surgery done. Supposedly. Yeah. Um I mean, you could. I mean, you could say Oscar, but they're not booking her to be as strong as Diana or as in ring com as in ring competent as Diana. Um, you could say Io, but she just lost. Uh, you could say Bianca Belair, but I think that would be the closest. But even so, I mean, as far as the in, as far as the mat work, I think Diana wrestles circles around Bianca Belair. Um, I mean, I don't think it's that bold of a statement, but I, but I, but I, but I welcome all challenges. She is arguably in the top three right now. Currently, it's hard to ever argue against Charlotte, even if she's being put it's off with something stupid. Charlotte's always going to be considered the best. It's true. Um, Becky Lynch, when she returns, it'll be interesting to see how that is. But currently, she's not. Um, Sheeta, I think, is always kind of Sheeta once again, it, incredible in ring performances, but yeah. there's not really a story. Britt Baker's story with her right now might be the best thing that's happened to her reign since Nyla, Ro- not Nyla Rose, I'm sorry, Thunder Rosa. Yeah, and taking a look at since Deanna Prazo debuted in Impact, she's had fuse against every, every. I don't want to say competent fee, female, but every top knockout and impact. There you go. Okay. You know, and you know, it goes without saying she doesn't need a stable. Um, the stable needs her. Yes. Now maybe we also get a Kimberly turn against Deanna. Finally, maybe Kimberly's tired of being the, the lackey, which I could see. I can see that. I think it would be all for nothing. I think that uh, I don't see Kimber Lee as a credible singles competitor. I think she's fine in the role she's at. Now, what I want to see old now, this is what I was hoping ultimately when we first got this stable was eventually to get Kimber Lee and Susan as our knockout tag team champions, Deanna as the women's, they hold all the gold. Um, obviously that won't happen. Jordan Grace and Rachel Allen are winning. Um, but it, it, it goes without saying that the impact women's division has needed her as a champion to survive. Um, if it's anybody else, I think we're kind of floundering at this point. At, at some point, we're going to need to give Deanna at least some kind of – well, maybe not, actually. Um, I was about to say we might need to give her a break, but, I mean, with, with the way they run tapings. Mm-hmm. And my other thing, and I, and I mentioned this on the WrestleCast um, over the last couple of weeks at some point, um, the AEW Impact working relationship – You know, and I'm really hoping we get more crossover because, and not for, 
uh, and that's been the whole thing. I know, I know she's battling Crohn's. Um, so it's touch and go as to when we will see her again on a consistent basis. But um, I think even just for the lack of repetitive matches or the lack of feuds, or maybe, you know, it comes to a point where Dion is like, there's nothing left here for me. I'm going to go see what's going on over there, you know, and maybe go over there, do matches on dark and elevation, you know, and well, it's a possibility, but I, but I think that Deanna is, has kind of run the gambit here. That's fair. All right. Match. I actually kind of skipped over Matt Cardona versus Brian Myers. Uh, because we're picking the same person. Matt Cardona. Yeah. Matt Cardona. Yeah, because I, I've He's we might get a full time. I don't think. No, but we did talk about this on the WrestleCast this past Thursday, um, or sorry, this past Monday um, about the recent WWE releases. Um, so we have some new free agents there out on the market. And the one that has been an impact who left for the E and personally, I think will return um, is Chelsea green. Um, I think it's very possible that if Cardona signs long-term, they, that the odds of getting Chelsea green back to impact um, sky, I think skyrocket. There is, uh, well, we'll get into this. I think at a later time, uh, yeah. I got some thoughts on that as well. But but my but my overall point is, if they sign Cardona, that means he's getting the win here, um, which is good for Chelsea Green because I mean she comes in and she's a credible women's competitor. Um, but again, thanks to change. Um, I'm tired of – okay, if Cardona doesn't stay in impact, you know, good for him. He's finally out of the East system for, you know, as many years as he's been been there. And um, I wish you would just pick some place and stay. I mean, uh, at some point. At some point, yeah. You know? Let, let the guy go all over the place. Let him let him experience things. He's never stepped foot in a Ring of Honor ring. Yet. I'd say you could get one match there. EC3 had a match there. See what it's yeah. like. You know? Finish up your storyline here, then go on over. Find out. Maybe EC3 puts him down. Yeah. Just throwing stuff out there now. Makes um, sense. Yeah, so I think Cardona wins here, but I wouldn't mm. be surprised if Brian Myers, Brian Myers picks up the W. Agreed. All right. Impact tag titles on the line. It's Finn Juice versus the Good Brothers uh, on three. It's the Good Brothers. Good Brothers all the way. There is – this is the, this has been fun. Um, I think they kind of flipped the switch – on this past um, on this past Thursday's episode of Impact, they're done. They're tired. They are ready to reclaim um, the gold in Impact, and it will go right with um, the winner of the Impact World Heavyweight Championship at the end of the night. It'll be real um, nice when everyone shows up with all the gold on Wednesday and on Thursday. And on Thursday, yeah. Be really nice. Main event time. Yeah. Champion yeah. versus champion. Winner takes all. Second pay per view in a row. We have the Impact slash TNA World Champion Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega, the AEW World Champion, with Don Callis. Uh, yeah, and before we go any further, um, take 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 the names out of out of the equation we have we have the we have the world heavyweight champion from one american promotion taking on 
the world heavyweight champion from another American promotion in 2021. Um, we've seen some crossover with NWA before. Um, NWA is briefly, you know, in, you know, in, in a partnership with TNA, Ring Ring of Honor. Um, but, I mean, this, this, is, this is historic. It's a pretty um, big move. Yeah, and I think um, if it were a different Impact World Champion, this match would be um, even more historic. Um, uh, I think I think we all we are on the same mindset that Rich Swan is not the Impact World Champion we need or de- or deserve. I think. You know what I wish? This or Moose? Not even that. I wish that this event was being held at Daly's place so there could be an audience for it. Yeah. If we're going to have this kind of match with these kind of implications, I really wish there was a crowd for it. Although we do get Moro Ranallo as the guest uh, color commentator. So, Do we know who is stepping out of commentary for that? Are we going to have a three-man booth for it? I would assume it's a three-man I'd be very okay with that. Yeah, and if this is Moro Ronaldo, if this is his gig, is doing main events on pay per views, that's perfect. It's the perfect that's spot for him. For him. He he won't he, get overexposed. Yeah. Um, but I think we're both in agreement. This is this is a Kenny Omega win, right? I mean, look, who are you guys talking to? It's Kenny Omega till it's not Kenny Omega. <laughs> Yeah, um, before um, we had that outstanding um, Kenny promo on being the the elite, there was just a tiny, tiny, small piece that was, you know what, Impact and Tony Khan could be just bat crap insane and pull off the Rich Swan heist of the century. Um and then we got that promo about, hey, you know, we, we, you know, we didn't start this, you know, to do flips, and you know, we, 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 we did this to change the business, you know, and this is what he's gonna do. Um, I'm totally flipping the script on this too, because I put this into the world about a month ago. Um, Rich, Rich Swan is not kicking out of a one-winged angel. He is not kicking out of pretty much anything else or shouldn't. Um, Rich, Rich Swan's title reign has been based on luck. Um, there's no luck when you're, when, you're, when you're a member of the elite. There's no luck. I think, um, if anything, what a statement it would be if we just come in and just squash Rich Swan. It's not going to happen because this is a historic event. It's a historic match. We need to look, we, we need to make Rich Swan look good in defeat so that when he gets his rematch in about a month or two, it, it looks like a credible rematch. Uh, man. Or, or do we go the, uh, um, the Cena Lesnar route of Kenny Omega beats him in a minute. And then the next match is, or or not beats him, but just embarrasses him, like just completely, totally wipes the floor with him. And then in a month, Rich Swan shows up and has a good showing, but still gets beat. Still gets beat. Oh, I'd be totally content with that. I think um, this is what this is what we've wanted the entire time: the Kenny Omega belt collector. I think I think we forgot about that, or some people may have forgotten about it in the midst of the exploding bar barbed wire death match and uh, the whole thing with the Bucks and Kenny coming on and Don making him a video of all the one winged angels and you know I I think somewhere just in promos and vignettes it may have gotten lost that Kenny Omega is the belt collector. This is why we have, you know, this, this is this is why in kayfabe we have this. We have this crossover. So Kenny Omega can be the belt collector. 
So there's no reason why Rich Swan wins here. It would be in a really, really bad mistake. Now, there's a part of me that goes, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we have like a double count out and the match restarts somewhere early on in it, you know? Or maybe, or maybe, uh, Anything, let me let me put it to you very, very simple. If this is anything other than a Kenny Omega win where he is both champions, this is a this is a disappointment. Well, I was gonna say you may get like a, a double count out and then a restart the match, no holds barred, or something like that. And that and that I'd be fine with. Yeah. Um, because we go that route, then we expect some shenanigans. I almost don't want any shenanigans. I, I want Kenny Omega just to exactly. win straight up. Exactly. Because uh, I think that's our hope. The best wrestler in the world, world. today. Yeah, without a doubt. And he, he needs a platform, I think. I think um, I think he's doing what is expected of him in AEW. I think he needs more high profile matches to mm-hmm. kind of to kind of show the world what he's capable of. Um, we got to move away from John Moxley. Well, here's the thing that's coming up. Um, because we're looking to double or nothing where it's going to be – a lot of people were saying it's going to be Mox again. Yeah. And I don't but want to. see, that. here's the problem. We had an exploding barbed wire death, death match where he, you know – lost like he lost and then was supposed to die <laughs> Let, let's get that right and i know this is an impact prediction show but this needs to be said um i think your next logical challenger christian cage i agree because the story is already there from the, the minute he debuted on, on dynamite yeah, the moment he debuted on Dynamite, he's a former. I mean, granted, he's an NWA World Heavyweight Champion, you know, but it was still under the TNA umbrella. Challenge for the Impact World Title. Correct. On the and see, this is where Kenny Omega is going to double dip. Yep. Because he's going to defend the Impact World Title against Christian Cage at at, at double or nothing. Defend the AEW World Heavyweight Championship against John Moxley and still come out the other side. And then from there, hey, it's time for me to go to collect some more gold. You're next, Nick Aldis. Oh God. <laughs> You're next. Don't don't do that to me. Don't do that to I am I'm Mr. doing that to Jeff. Uh don't do that to Mr. Mickey James. You know what's gonna happen? He's going to have his stuff in a trash bag. He's going to send the title to Impact over in a trash bag. Oh, my God. Ugh, you know, my heart, my heart can't take this. trash to Kenny Omega. It's true. You're not wrong. So, um, guys, that's Rebellion. We got to wrap this up so we can get this put out there before, uh, before it's too late. Yeah. Um, but, no, this is a lot of fun. This is a stacked card. It's going to be entertaining. Um, historic card. Ways you can catch this show. You can order it on Fight. Um, or if you have M- Impact Plus, it's going to be free with a capital F, which is why I pay my $7.99 a month without tax. So um, I'm surprised that this was a free Impact one, though. I kind of thought this was going to be a, one of the paid ones. I think Impact has now kind of moved to the network kind of mind mindset mm-hmm. um, where we have the partnership with fight. You know, if people don't want to sub- subscribe, they have that option, but if they subscribe, they get this plus all this, Yeah, um, which I'm in love with. So all about it guys, 
If you like what you heard, you can support us at uh, ko-fi.com slash PWO123. It's as easy as one, two, three. And for the small price of a cup of coffee, you guys can help us put on this incredible, incredible show here. Other than that, Cod, hit him with the plug. Yeah, go to the YouTube. There's a lot of good stuff, including stuff involving me, Ryan Alvarez, uh, Alvarez versus, uh, versus Meltzer. Uh, if you have show requests, go to any of my videos. There is a business email in there you can submit your uh, request to. Um, other than that, um, you know, we're going to chug along. Uh, Jeff and I doing the ref bump. We just did WrestleMania X7. Go check that out. We're going to do uh, G1 Supercard here very soon. Wow. Uh, Good one. Yeah. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, also, final final plug. Make sure you go to Next Gen TN. Okay. We're going to go see Next. We have the Next Generation Wrestling here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, they just announced one half of the former Crime Time JTG. Uh, JTG is making his return. Um, to serious competitive wrestling. Uh, this is June 27th, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. You can go to nextgentn.net. Tickets are going fast, $18 for adults, $15 for children. Um, go to the last episode of WrestleCast from this past Thursday. We gave the full list, and it took a lot to um, kind of get that list together. So, um, guys, go follow them on all their socials, nextgentn. Um, it's at everything. It's at Facebook. It is at Twitter. It's at it, it's at the Instagrams. So, guys, show them some love. Okay, they did us a solid. They came on. We're gonna have them on again here in a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully, we get some match announcements. Um, that's where you'll see Caleb Conley, who is also on Impact Rebellion. You never know who else might show up. So. With that, guys, enjoy the show. We'll see you tomorrow for the WrestleCast. This has been everyone's favorite, the two-man power trip. I was on the other side this time. Ah. <laughs>